Welcome to Fossil Creek. I'm Max. I'll be your garden coach today. Today we're going to talk about plants that take the heat and sun. And to give you a little bit of orientation on that, we're in zone 8. That's USDA. If you ever wondered what USDA means, uh, it's the United States uh, Department of Agriculture. And zone 8 is talking about the typical average low temperature for the winter and in zone 8 that would be 10 to 20 degrees also uh, there's a heat zone map and that uh, USDA uh, hardiness zone that probably goes back to the 40s is when that originated uh, the National Horticultural Society uh, probably 20 or 30 years ago they came up with a heat zone map since uh, if you just paid attention to the USDA hardiness zone map, we're in zone A. But if you live in Washington State or Oregon, big portions of those areas are zone A. How much do they have in common with us? Well, not a whole lot, uh, other than the average low temperature might be similar. But the heat zone map, that speaks to the number of days per year that are hotter than 86 degrees. And here, we're, since we're zone 9 on a heat zone map, that means we have between 120 and 150 days per year that are over 86 degrees. Now Washington and Oregon, they're nowhere near that. So the plants that would they're probably more similar to England than to us. So uh, a lot of the things I'll be talking about today are well suited to uh, our heat situation, uh, specifically, you know, zone nine. Uh, it's pretty hot and of course, I have a customer that over 86 means uh, what we have is a lot of those days, the, uh, I think I'll turn off my radio. A lot of those days are uh, very hot. In fact, I think it was the year 2011 that uh, that was the hottest average summer temperature on record uh, to that date. And in that particular summer, we had uh, 50 to 60 days that the high was over 100, but we had a very large number of days, most of them those same days, where the low was 85 or 86. So plants didn't get much of a respite at night. So plants that couldn't really tolerate heat were going to be stressed and not uh, really perform. Uh, the plants I'm going to show today, most of these are going to tolerate uh, heat and sun uh, extremely well. And of course, we're, um, I think the sub subtitle for our topic for today is not just sun and heat plants, but uh, it's going to be uh, plant juggling. We're going to be doing a lot of plant juggling. So if you haven't seen it before, uh, well, you will after we get finished. Uh, we're going to talk about the categories of plants will be annuals, perennials, and uh, tropicals. And of course, uh, annuals are plants. like wax begonias that will complete their whole life cycle in a season. They'll last from typically March until Halloween, maybe Thanksgiving. They don't take a freeze. When the freeze shows up, they're pretty much done. And uh, now you may have little microclimates around your yard where if we have a winter like we just had, which was basically canceled, uh, something like a begonia could make it through, but that's that's not typical and that's not something we say expect that because typically it doesn't happen. Uh, perennials are plants that um, come back from their roots, the original plant. Uh, some of them are woody uh, perennials that never really go away. They're like shrubs and then the others are herbaceous perennials, meaning uh, they basically disappear uh, in the winter. Hostas would be in that group. 
uh, things like uh, camas, uh, Mexican petunias. Basically, when they get a hard freeze in January, they're done. You can cut them back and it'll be March or April before they come back, but they will come back from the original roots. And then I also, the other class of plants that we have are the tropicals, and here those are treated like annuals. If you live in Miami or Hawaii, they go on and on, but we have a winter here, and it's typically enough to uh, freeze tropicals uh, to death. Some of them even though they're tropical in nature, like the uh, Esperanza, it would be actually classified here a tender perennial. Typically it's gonna freeze to the ground, but most of the time it'll come back. But uh, it is a, a tropical plant and it could, it could freeze to death. So we'll, I'll run through the, a bunch of the annuals first, and these are uh, plants that have a very long bloom period. Typically they're more showy than a lot of the perennials. Not, not absolutely so, but typically so. And they, their claim to fame is they're in constant bloom, like the, uh, one of my favorites, periwinkles, which come in neat colors and uh, two different uh, forms. There's the uh, upright and the trailing. Trailing will get about six inches, maybe a little more, but they'll go 18 or 24 inches wide. Uh, you know, one plant will do that over the season. The uprights, typically, they just get about eight inches wide, but they can go 15 or 16 inches tall. So a different uh, shape, but they're equally tough. And okay. we have a really neat assortment of colors. Of course, this is a, a trailing one called polka dot. Uh, this is an upright red okay. and an apricot color. And we'll have a bunch more colors. There are some that are kind of a bluish color, others that are lavender, but a good assortment. And those, it, Cannot get too hot, can't get too sunny. They're in constant bloom uh, from now until typically Thanksgiving. Maybe Christmas, depends on how hard the freezes uh, come in. Uh, along with those, for a full sun, another trailing type plant, moss rose, comes in a bunch of different colors, stays very low, loves the sun. It's almost a succulent type of plant gets by on low water. And of course the uh, old standby wax begonias and people come in all the time and say I want the one for sun and which one is that? Well this is a green leaf with a red bloom. These are bronze leaf uh, a mixed white and pink, white and red, and think the way, easy way to remember is it's just like people. If they're doing a lot of sun, they're going to get a tan. So the bronze leaf, they're for sun. The uh, green leaf, there's one thing that's a little different. They also come in pink and white. The pink and white are really shade. They'll take some early morning sun, but really a shade item. The red, it can kind of go either way. If it's in predominantly shade, it blooms just fine, the foliage will remain green. If it is exposed to quite a bit of sun, the foliage ends up being about the color of the blooms, but they'll, they'll still work. They're just a tougher plant uh, than the white or pink in a green leaf. And then that uh, same type of plant, a real premium plant, the uh, dragon wing begonia. It comes in red and pink. The pink is same as the uh, wax begonias in a whiter pink. It's a shade plant. 
won't tolerate very much sun at all, especially once we get hot, hot. Whereas the uh, red blooming variety, these guys will get two feet tall. Uh, the uh, wax begonias typically, they'll get the size of a volleyball, maybe the size of a basketball, but the dragon wings get to be a substantial plant. The red ones, they wouldn't really do all afternoon sun, but they could take quite a bit and, and still be okay. But they'll also uh, grow just fine and bloom well in shade. So a little versatile there. Of course, another uh, full sun plant, Penthes, assortment of colors, dark red, white. We've got some pink out there. We'll probably have, uh, if we don't already, we'll have those in the purple. Very heat, very heat tolerant. Those will be in the, get to 12 to 16 inches, kind of depending on the variety. Another old standby, Dusty Miller. That one gets about 12 to 15 inches tall. Full sun to all the way to a pretty fair amount of shade, still gonna work. It's just a foliage plant and a, a neat contrast. And it, uh, that's basically kind of what you do, get to do with plants is, uh, especially women, you know, when you were girls, you played dress up. Now you get to do it with, with bedding plants, so. Uh, if you can, if you can match a blouse and a pair of slacks, you can work with with bedding plants. Same kind of thing. Another uh, little different bloom from the uh, annuals, Gumfrina, purple buddy. It also comes in white and pink. Kind of neat because it uh, blooms all through the summer into the fall, and it's got little button flowers. A different form. Some neat colors but extremely heat tolerant, tough little plant. Of course, plants that have been worked with a lot, coleus, now they used to be, years ago, most of the uh, coleus were shade plants. Now, really probably most of them are sun plants. They've been uh, developed varieties that cope with a lot of sun. They tend to grow big. They'll get a foot and a half, two feet tall, foot and a half wide. You can kind of trim them as they go. Uh, if you wanted to put them in a, in a big pot with other plants, uh, just keep in mind that they're gonna tend to take over a little bit. So give them some space and uh, be ready to trim a little with your scissors if you have to. But they have uh, super colors and pretty neat names. That one a neat texture and it's got one of my favorite names, wasabi. And then of course this one. I wouldn't have necessarily said wasabi. Well, that's obvious. Uh, it's just a neat name, but this one's kind of obvious. Electric lime. You can tell that's where that came from. And this guy, I got in here without a tag, but I love them. Neat colors. Of course, here's a, here's a, a new one this, this year or at least new to us, Pink Explosion. And of course, speaking of something that would uh, mix well, you know, the red picks that up, or uh, we had that around a, a, a purple fountain grass, that would look super. And of course, the uh, purple fountain grass is most of the grasses we have are perennials, perennial, uh, but the purple fountain grass, that's an annual. It's a zone nine. We're on zone eight. This guy, he doesn't like to see it below 35. So it uh, would be highly unusual for him to survive a winter here. Uh, if you protected it in a pot, you could do it, but uh, the uh, 
appeal to this guy is, of course, he'll have the the seed heads, you know, that are fountain uh, look to them, and gets to be pretty good size. These guys are at least three by three. They could even go four by four with all the with all the blooms on them. So uh, if you had it in a big pot uh, or in a flower bed, this is going to be kind of one of your thrillers that you would have uh, other items around it. It's going to dominate its uh, area, but uh, continue to sell tons of them because they're so showy and perform so well that even though you have to replant them every year, they're worth it. different uh, flower, a different texture, some neat colors, uh, celosia, and these guys bloom all through the summer into the fall, have neat colors, yellow, oranges, reds, of course these, after a while, uh, the main bloom will start to go to seed and its color will fade, so you can just pinch it out and there are little buds around it and those will take over, so you can keep it looking really good through the season. And these guys can be deceiving. This one is the, uh, pull out my eyeballs to. We planted this one last year on our, either side of our drive in our front beds. This is a Cosmo purple red. It looks kind of diminutive there, but uh, these guys get 24 inches tall and probably 15, 18 inches wide. So they look dinky, but uh, the ones we had up there, they got a solid two feet and spread and performed all the way through the summer into the fall. Really heat tolerant, really, really showy. So that's kind of an example of uh, when you plant big plants like a crepe myrtle, you want to make sure to plant it for what it's going to be, not what it is. So this would kind of be the bedding plant example of that. It might be one of the smallest things that you put in, but plant it for what it's going to be. It's going to get to be relative for a bedding plant, almost huge. And we have several varieties of Angelonia. This is uh, very heat tolerant. It's from a, I don't know exactly where in Mexico, but it's somewhere where it gets hot and stays hot because these, uh, they kind of won the, uh, the Fort Worth, not Fort Worth, but the Dallas Arboretum. They did a trials garden years ago when these came in and these won the uh, heat tolerance award for the new annuals, uh, 110. They think that's just fine. They're kind of nicknamed uh, Summer Snapdragon because their blooms kind of resemble a Snapdragon, but uh, bloom all through the summer into the fall. And those will vary a little bit by variety. I think this one gets about 12 inches. We have some out there that will get 18 inches or more. Very tough hot weather plant. And let's see. Another annual guy that I've mentioned before, but uh, uh, Silver Ponyfoot, uh, actually a dichondra, neat little gray leaf, trails forever. You could do it in a hanging basket or over the edge of a mixed pot. It would look neat with, uh, with this one. You know, it's kind of a contrast to the colors, but. Uh, dark green or silver, uh, they kind of make the colors close to them pop. That one is extremely uh, heat tolerant, relatively low water, but very showy. And now we'll do
before we get, a, get out of the annulus, here's another coleus. And this one's probably a part sun uh, or shade, but uh, a neat, neat color. And it's got a neat name, chocolate covered cherry. You can see how they came up with that. Got neat colors and uh, these to be, uh, you can kind of look at the other annuals to kind of bring out the colors that are in here. Of course I didn't, I've got potato vine here. That would be a natural because it brings out the light green in that, which brings out the pink and purple that much more. And of course, uh, potato vine comes in the light green, uh, burgundy, and the uh, tricolor, which has got a lighter green, kind of a grayish green leaf with uh, pink and white in it. And it can't get too hot for those. And more so than most uh, plants, annuals, they love water. So that makes them happy. And now, let's see. We'll do tropicals. And of course, here's where we'll compare. I won't get off on the perennials, but every year people come in and yeah, here we can. We can roll this guy backstage. Every year people come in and ask for hibiscus. And the first question is, tropical or perennial? This is a perennial hibiscus. We've got red, white, pink, and this is a tropical hibiscus. This guy's not going to do the winter. Uh, you can do it in a container to where you can bring it in and protect it uh, and put it back out when the weather warms up in the spring, but he's not going to stay outside in the ground or in a pot. He would uh, freeze to death. These guys, the perennial hibiscus, they're a herbaceous perennial, so when it gets really cold, they're gonna freeze back. You cut them off just about to the ground and they'll renew themselves and come back gangbusters uh, next spring. But they won't. it won't be March, it'll be April because a lot of the uh, perennials that are extremely heat tolerant they wait until it warms up and the nights get warm before they come on. So if you don't see it in March, that, that doesn't mean that it's not ready to get going once the weather warms up. So just be a little more patient with it. This is where the plant juggling comes in. A, one of the all-time favorites, uh, Blue Tropical Plumbago. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for blue, and this guy, he's uh, performing above and beyond. He's a, he's a star. It's such a neat color of blue, and This is a yellow Esperanza. Blue looks neat with that. Or orange is another neat one. This guy's decided to start start opening up. And of course, in Esperanza, we've got uh, three varieties: the regular yellow. Barclet, which is kind of orange and yellow. I used one of these uh, last year in a big uh, mixed pot out here. And as the summer went on, 
it just got better and better and better and then I thought it had achieved what it was going to do like mid-July on it just seemed to get even better than it was before so I was really impressed and this is a kind of an orangey red one bells of fire and these guys all love the heat and full sun Mandevilla. This one is a Sun Pori. It's a, a lot of these that we have now, they're a hybrid. So uh, this one is one uh, similar to what you may have seen in the past. The huge leaf is just now budding. It uh, blooms pink and very vigorous. Loves the sun. Best if it has something to climb up because they're uh, the big leaf pink one, very aggressive vine, uh, needs something fairly substantial to grow up. Uh, this one, the hybrid, it's kind of almost, it, it needs something to vine up to, but it's kind of halfway between a shrub and a vine. but a super neat color. And this one, the Croton, it's a uh, tropical, can be done as a house plant. Uh, it will adapt to full sun or shade and perform well in both. If you're gonna have it out in shade, it's best to uh, get it out in it uh, early. This is one that you you don't want to take from a shaded location and then plant out in full sun in July. It could scorch. It needs to acclimate to full sun and it'll be fine. But it will also uh, keep color and look good in shade. And here's a new one on me. Orange zest zestrum and this guy it's going to bloom all through the summer, a neat color, and this one gets pretty big. It can get six feet tall and six feet wide. It's a zone eight, hardy 10 to 20, but uh, loves the heat in a different color. And also it's uh, nice to have something that gets big. This is a firecracker plant. It's kind of meager now compared to what it's going to be. This guy will trail over. It's just starting to show some of the uh, firecracker blooms. It's got buds all over it. It's extremely heat and sun tolerant. Uh, this would be uh, neat in a uh, big pot toward the edge, you know, with uh, Esperanza, you know, this guy. Crotons, and uh, what else? I mean, it would look neat with a plumbago, but a real neat plant, very heat tolerant and showy, and a different texture. It's one of my favorites in that regard. And of course, uh, Mexican firebush, they're just beginning to bloom, have an orange red bloom, and the uh, claim to fame for them is and they they will get you know a foot and a half two feet tall and wide this one's a compact uh, variety and the reason for firebush isn't even necessarily the blooms which are orange red as much as when they're in full sun the foliage will actually get about the color of the orange red blooms so the whole thing looks like fire and that's another one it uh, can't get too hot for it This time, now we're 
we're kind of almost transitioning into perennials because uh, that's my set alarm that says it's now 11 o'clock. So I think we're on good pace covering everybody. And this is the uh, Red Star quarter line and it is a zone eight. So uh, if it got horrible, it could be at risk, but typically it's gonna make it through okay. And neat color and texture difference. We also have it in a gallon size, but that's a full sun to part sun, uh, a different look and, and texture, kind of a spiky thing to mix in with some of the others. And I think okay. And of course, on all of these things, this is not comprehensive we have more tropicals uh, we have more annuals couldn't bring everything in I tried uh, but now we'll transition into the perennials which we, we have uh, tons and tons of them and all different types of plants If you thought playing dress up was fun with annuals, uh, the perennials certainly are not taking a back seat. I'm going to have to do a little more plant juggling. That is a lot of flowers, Max. It is. <laughs> and this isn't all of them. This, I love this, it. This isn't half of them. That is awesome. That's why I said at the beginning, this is plant juggling 101. I love it. If you haven't seen it before, well, here it is. But, uh, and of course, on the perennials like the annuals there are some that like uh, more water can't can't have too much although most of them are on the medium to slightly on the dry side but we'll bring back the uh, perennial hibiscus to show some uh, assortment of plants that Perennial hibiscus love water. Bloom all through. And of course, these are cannas in the different colors. And they like water. They're not a swamp plant, but they can take a lot of water. They can take an, as much water as would kill a lot of other uh, perennials that are adapted to harsh, dry conditions. So that's why I'm kind of showing these with the perennial hibiscus because it likes water. And then it's up to you as to choosing which color you'd like to mix in there or, and if you wanted a brown covered perennial, it's gonna also bloom all through the summer. Typically the cannas, they're in the three to four foot range bloom all through the summer into the fall. In January, when it gets really cold, cut them to the ground, they'll come back. But another uh, perennial that likes water can actually grow at the edge of a pond, the uh, Mexican petunia. And we have them in pink and blue right now. And of course, if you wanted to see, if you had a 
if you had a carpet of these under this perennial hibiscus, with the unique combination of the blue under the pink flowers, almost suggesting of a actual body of water under there. But these guys, same thing, uh, they will spread. They're kind of aggressive. Come January, uh, they're done. They'll look bad. They freeze and uh, they'll come back from the ground. But, uh, and they will, that's another one that it looks very low right now, but actually those guys, they can get up 15 inches. So it's not like they're gonna be a tiny thing under this they're going to grow up enough to uh, show up, but that's kind of a, a neat combination. And of course, we have other colors of uh, the uh, perennial hibiscus. And now, let's see, those are kind of the wet tolerant. Well, of course, here's a, gotta get another one. The other question that I get pretty frequently is somebody comes in and says, where's the salvia? That's almost like saying, where are the perennials? Because there are a bunch of different salvia. Uh, this one, I think this is one of the guys that kind of, of the uh, big guys that are a little more tolerant of water. This is the one that started it all. I'm pretty sure this is uh, yeah, black and blue. See the kind of the base where the flowers come out of is black and then the flower comes out blue. Uh, these guys will get two to three feet. So they're also a substantial guy. Look kind of neat with pink. But in case you didn't already know it, I'll tell you, plant hybridizers don't leave anything alone. So uh, now we have rock and deep purple. So instead of blue, instead of black and blue, it's a uh, dark purple. And this is one that will also, we've got a good tag on here. You can look on the back and I think this guy is in the you know, 30 to 40 inch range. So that's another one that looked kind of neat with uh, a uh, pink kind of a contrast. Very sun tolerant, heat tolerant. And then here's the other one. It's a, a new one, a new blue, and this was rocking blue suede shoes, not purple, blue. But neat looking foliage, tough plants, and can, can uh, exist around cannas and the perennial hibiscus. kind of into the guys that can cope with dry which is what we have a lot of they will still take supplemental watering but uh, they're not they're not needy once they're established they're pretty tough Lately, there are more and more uh, sedums available. And uh, this one, the lemon ball, it's one of the ones that stays low and spreads. Uh, it can bloom right now. They all bloom. Their foliage is really their claim to fame, but the blooms are certainly showy and neat. And that would be a uh, sunny location, stays low, be a neat thing in a rock garden. The uh, and those are evergreen and we have typically we have some of those in one gallon this is a two gallon we have a bunch of them in four inch pots and those are the perennial varieties we also have uh, sedum these guys get bigger and they are 
deciduous uh, herbaceous basically when it gets really cold in January they're gonna freeze out you prune them off and they're they'll have little little buds on the soil surface through the winter but the, the plant will be gone and these guys are in the oh, 20 to 30 inch range and then they uh, bloom in the late summer fall and this one right here is a uh, neon sedum so it will bloom red and uh, they're very attractive to butterflies and another thing that would look neat in a rock garden or an arid kind of location and of course uh, Santalina if you like the smell of weeds you'll love this plant that smells like a weed uh, very tough evergreen a neat color of green a different texture it would go with uh, the uh, you could plant that with annuals like moss rose, purslane, any of the uh, tough, low, sunny ground covers or the sedum that we just showed. It also comes here, it also comes in a uh, silvery gray uh, variety. We're out of it right now, but that's a neat companion to the sedums. Uh, big ones or the little ones. And they'll get about foot and a half or so and uh, tall and wide and of course a bigger guy which uh, palace castle artemisia uh, and as artemisias go this one is the most adapted here uh, very tough a winter like we just had it would be evergreen if we had a harsh winter it would be bit by the cold but it would survive it well and come back strong and they're in the, those guys will get oh, two feet and uh, a little wider than tall, but a, a super neat texture and color. Okay. Now we get into some of the heavy hitters of the perennials. Of course, and all a uh, perennial favorite, butterfly bush. We've got a new series this year, the uh, Pugster, which they're a dwarf. They'll get two to three feet tall and wide. We've got uh, blue and purple, uh, white, and maybe one, one other maybe one other color but uh, this is covered with buds all over it and blooms all the way through the summer and it is a uh, neat companion for because of the the different colors available in a different flower form That's a dwarf daylily, Stella daora. Uh, there's just a bunch of colors in, in the uh, butterfly bush that look neat with a bunch of the other uh, hot, sunny location perennials. Moonshine yarrow, kind of a grayish foliage, uh, tall yellow. It's going to be taller than, uh, or about the same height as this, but just a more upright form. But a uh, neat, neat combination. The colors bring each other out. Tough plant, and it's uh, butterflies like it. And to me, it kind of suggests it's a uh, kind of like a helicopter landing pad for butterflies kind of flat on the top and uh, a, a butterfly could have poor vision and still make a landing on that.
15 minutes to go. We're on time. So we have such an assortment of uh, perennials that like the heat and different flower forms. This is a rock rose. Gets two to three feet tall, blooms all through the summer into the fall. This is the one of those that uh, last summer I was kind of surprised. We had 20 of them in bloom and out in the uh, perennial area and a hummingbird showed up and it hit five different perennials and I was surprised that it uh, worked over the whole 20 of the rock rows that were in bloom. I'd never seen that before and typically the books don't even say that they do it but uh, uh, a neat surprise and a neat look. I uh, love the color and a, a different form and has some height to it. Continuing in the salvias, which there seem to be tons of, two of the best. Both of these are uh, salvia farinacea, uh, different varieties. The Victoria Blue, both of these guys are, when they came out, uh, they were award winners. They both bloom all through the summer, neat blue colors. Uh, they're just beginning now. This guy's not really showing his blue, but uh, with a name like Victoria Blue, you know, he is going to. Uh, this one's about a two foot by two foot. If he was super happy, he might be three foot by three foot, but blooms all through the summer, into the fall. Probably be blooming at Thanksgiving if we don't have any odd weather and, uh, and this one is uh, Henry Duelberg a little bit taller a little bit more leggy but uh, very productive through the summer and this is not a salvia and it's one of my favorite plants we haven't had it before but this is a this the name of this one a meteor shower and this is a Verbena bonariensis, or some people call it a uh, Brazilian Verbena, or another nickname for it is Verbena on a stick. Extremely slender, uh, tall stems, uh, thin foliage, and from a distance, uh, that's basically what it looks like. They're just getting into bloom. They'll have a whole lot more. We've got a bunch of buds on them but when they're covered with uh, uh, buds and blooms from a distance, uh, that's what it looks like. It looks like verbena blooms on green sticks. Uh, a neat plant, and this one doesn't get uh, quite as tall as the uh, uh, species, but it'll get 30 inches tall. And where's that fly? Oh, it's a little bit, uh, so far as the zone seven to 11. So, hardier than I guessed it to be. So, uh, and they'll also uh, typically tend to reseed themselves some, but a, a super neat look in a combination with other plants. And since we got started on verbena, there's another one. Typically, this is a more typical verbena look, low and spreading. And these guys, low water needs. This one's Injura. And you could do it as a ground cover or in big uh, containers. It spreads quite a bit and will bloom from now till typically uh, Thanksgiving. And they're about 12 inches tall, and that's probably going to be actually the flowers are going to be 12 inches the plant will be below that but each plant could cover a, a three foot circle love the heat and sun but one of those you don't want to be too kind if you keep it too wet they get unhappy Couple more salvia hiding in here. 
uh, May night, that's a popular one. Uh, lower growing, you know, they're in the probably 15 inch range. And this one's uh, covered with buds. And of course, to uh, keep these going, just as they, the blooms finish up, you can snip out the spent blooms with a scissor. That keeps them going really well. And then this one, can you tell I'm a sucker for blue? Uh, this is a bicolor sage. Sinoleonensis. Uh, I don't think I got that right, but that's as close as we get. But uh, low and a neat color of blue. I think that one's in the 12 inch height. So it's gonna spread and uh, just a really neat color of blue. Very, very heat tolerant, bloom through the summer. These are more hybrids, uh, flocks. They will bloom uh, from now through the summer. Neat colors. These guys are uh, compact, more so than uh, some of the uh, old, like uh, oh, the Phlox uh, paniculata. They will tend to get uh, taller. About, about 20 inches on these, but uh, neat colors, very heat tolerant, very showy. And a neat one for a different look. Somebody had these last year and they called up and they couldn't remember what they were, but they said they're kind of low, but very airy. That's the name of the game on this guy. In fact, this one, this is uh, Whirling Butterflies. And this is a uh, Gara. And the color is uh, sparkle white. And they, the stems get up about this high. And it's got a bunch more coming up. So uh, you can kind of see how they got the name Whirling Butterflies. The stems are almost invisible. And it does look like a bunch of little butterflies. A neat, uh, different form, kind of the opposite of that one, uh, and where they got this name, I'll never know, someday I guess I'll find out, Blackfoot Daisies, they're native, they stay low, they'll only get about 12 inches tall, maybe 15, 18 inches wide, bloom through the summer into the fall, extremely tough, uh, loves the heat, uh, adapted to uh, less water, uh, uh, neat form, neat color, you know, dainty little daisy flowers. Uh, this one, I think we're out of, uh, we're out of uh, lamb's hair, which is kind of a grayish, but uh, these just look really neat with uh, lamb's hair. And of course, that kind of gives you a, they're kind of a grayish green foliage, so the lamb's hair kind of makes them stand out. They've got some new uh, ground cover, like Asian Jasmine. Got two varieties. One's got bronze in it. This one, uh, Summer Snow, it's got white in it. Uh, or actually, it's Snow in Summer. That would be a neat one. Evergreen, huh? Of course, Echinacea or Cone Flower. Different varieties of those. A native flower. Butterflies love them. And. Here we've got a uh, skull cap. They, they get about maybe 18 inches tall, 12 to 18 inches tall, maybe at three feet wide. Uh, and these are just coming into bloom. They get to where they're just covered with blooms, go through the summer, into the fall. Very tough little perennial plant. So, almost forgot a salvia. P minus not very much. We're wrapping it up. Uh, of course, this is uh, another native plant, the uh, Salvia gregei or autumn sage. Comes in, we, we end up getting 
six or seven colors. Uh, this is a pink. We get different reds. I've got a coral out there right now and a white evergreen, a semi-evergreen, two and a half feet by two and a half feet. A uh, really tough plant blooms from now till probably Thanksgiving. And of course the old standby, uh, Purple Heart Perennial. This is another one. It spreads, doesn't get that tall, you know, maybe a foot or so, maybe a little more. It spreads well. And another one that uh, typical winter in January, it goes away, but comes back. A winter like we just had probably wouldn't even go away. Here's some mini guys that we wanted to show. If you have something area where you don't need something very big uh, with uh, sun, these are balloon flowers. Pretty easy to say where they come up with the name. We've got pink, white, and I think we're sold out of blue, but we'll probably get some. Um, stay compact, bloom all through the summer into the fall, and a dependable perennial. Would be perennials without going over lantana. Wouldn't be Texas without lantana. There's Dallas Red. That guy will probably get three feet by three feet. New gold, foot and a half by two, maybe even three feet. Bloom, all these bloom through the summer and well into the fall. Uh, a trailing lavender, be like a foot and a half tall and three feet wide. And another big guy, confetti, it's kind of got the pink, pink, yellow, a little orange. Uh, cannot get too hot for those guys. And I think our last two of the day covered some plants earlier, very uh, drought tolerant and neat in the rock garden. Uh, the, uh, this is a jewel desert ruby. The, uh, uh, it's called a common name ice plant. I uh, have that in several different colors. Stays real low, blooms through the summer into the fall. Very tough. Of course, if you're doing uh, uh, pots or hanging baskets, or you just need a, a very low ground cover, the uh, Creeping Jenny, that one roots as it spreads, stays relatively low, uh, likes water, uh, can take shade or quite a bit of sun, but uh, a neat, neat color. And I guess that'll cover. We got a bunch more. But all these guys will be happy with Texas. So uh, that'll get you going. And they will. Uh, that's a neat thing. We have a long growing season, and these guys will make it from late spring, typically till Thanksgiving. So thanks for tuning in.